Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today another one episode about HTMX enclosure. The idea for today is to build a page with a list of items uh, and we will be able to uh, delete the list from the item. So the item should be removed without page reload and uh, we will start with a simple approach by using just uh, built-in alert uh, window but uh, after that we'll try some advanced uh, uh, dialogues with uh, sweet alert uh, library so yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes so going to our editor and uh, i created a new folder here a new namespace and that's called delete with confirmation and we uh, will need to additional routes in our application. The first one will be HTMX delete with confirmation, which will show our root page. And after that, this uh, uh, route will handle delete uh, HTTP method, and it will have ID item ID in the path params, uh, and we'll use that to delete uh, the item from, from the list. So far the page is, uh, is empty, and let's start building. First of all, uh, I suggest we add some test data so we see it when we reload the page. Uh, let's create our function to uh, generate random items. So it will be a random item. And we want to return a map with ID and it will be uh, random UID. And we want title and it will be first from FL so FL is for the fake lorem uh, namespace, and I'm using this fake library to generate some test data. And we have this uh, function sentences, and we this will basically generate a, a lazy sequence of uh, sentences, and we're taking the first from that. So we have this. Now we want our state item. So let's say uh, state, uh, or maybe we can just call them items item and we want atom and we want to initialize that with re sequence of items so it will be let's say we want uh, 50 items and we provide the function the random uid cool so now we'll have this global atom for our uh, example and we can use that as a state in the uh, root handler so inside this div we now want to loop through items from the items atom so it will be item and we want deref the atom here so it will be items atom and let's build just simple div here and let's say we want um, title from the item right yeah so we made a mistake so it should be a random random item here right let's reload and see our page here we go we have uh, multiple divs so let's just make them a bit prettier so let's say we have we want padding 2 and uh, odd will be background red 50 and even background green 50 let's see how it looks yeah so now we we see different divs that's fine now let's go to our example from htmx uh, and we will take a look in this hx confirm first so here's an example of a simple button let's pick that and put it as part of our div so let's say we want an extra div at the bottom and if we paste this snippet here we convert it to a hiccup um, let's call this one just delete and the a, uh, href should be htmx uh, delete with confirmation and then we want items and at the end we want the item id so it will be a string and id from item let's wrap this into a div as well so 
reload the page. Okay, so now we have uh, this delete button. Let's style it a bit. So let's say re um, text red 600. Maybe under hover underline. See, yeah. Okay, so now we have delete buttons. Let's open the inspector and let's take a look what's going on. Network. Click delete. And we have this prompt from the browser. Uh, we show to delete the account. Let's click OK. And we have this. Uh, um, Ajax request fired, uh, which is successful because we fall back on like we always return to 100 from that. And as you see, the button disappeared. And that's that's not what we really want. We want uh, the entire div to disappear, right? So, first of all, let's fix this prompt. Are you sure you wish to delete uh, this item, right? So, this will be um, that text in the prompt that we received. But now uh, we want to use uh, HX um, target and we want to uh, target the entire div that specify uh, that basically describes our item. To do that, we can add an ID here for the for the div. Let's create maybe a helper function for that. So let's say um, item div ID and it will get the item and we want to return a string that will be something like let's just call it item div and at the end we will add ID from the item like that now we can pass this ID param here and pass the item inside and now here in the target, uh, if we want to reference an ID, we want to follow this uh, um, button and now ID here. So let's call another function. Uh, let's create another function, call it uh, item div ID ref. And we're passing item. And the only thing we want is to add this symbol in the front and call our item div id function with item inside so yep let's call it here item ref item reloading the page refreshing let's inspect this to see if we have ids in place Yeah, so you see this ID and we add this uh, random UID at the end. And now if we click delete, confirm, and yeah, the entire div is removed. And I believe as we s s have this, uh, this item left, I think it's called... Uh, hx um, swap alter ht to refresh once again do it yeah and now we see that it works as expected the entire div is removed we still have a small problem right because this delete uh, removes the item from uh, from the list but if we refresh the page uh, we see it again, and that's because we never implemented the correct logic, logic inside delete handler. So uh, by default, uh, if uh, the response from delete is returning 200 for HTMX, that means that we successfully delete the item and we need to uh, execute the swap logic for the element. So the div is removed according to our target. Uh, um, HX target configuration, but when we refresh the page, it obviously renders the entire list because it's still in the state atom. So we want uh, to create a function here to um, 
remove the item by ID from uh, from the um, from the state item, and uh, let's first print our item ID item ID, and it will be something like that. Let's print it. Item ID. Reload the page. We call delete. And yeah, we see it's printed here. So that's correct. We take this from path prompts. And this is basically controlled here. We have this um, column. And this will be the name our, for our path prompts. So having that, uh, now we want to create a function that will update our state atom uh, and uh, remove the item. So I think it will be something like we call swap on the item state um, items atom, right? And we want um, our function to be something like items here. And we want to um, remove and here we'll have item and we want to compare uh, ID from the item to the item ID. And as this is, is this will come a string. We just want to wrap this in a string as well. But the other option will be just to pass this as uh, UID. But uh, it's not a topic for the video. So let's say we remove that and it's items here. Let's refresh and try once again. Delete. Okay. And now if we refresh, this should still be the first line. Yeah. And moving next, um, we want to try something better than uh, like boring uh, request like that. By the way, we can cancel that, right? And it will do nothing. That works. So then... The other example they have is to use uh, this library, uh, which is sweet a lot, and a bit of HyperScript uh, code to uh, control control that. So first of all, we need this uh, sweet a lot library to be included, and also as we'll use this uh, HyperScript, uh, we need that library as well. But I already added that uh, in our include GS uh, snippet. Here, so we have HyperScript and Sweet Alert. So potentially we can just uh, instead of our button, let's go here and we want to uh, convert again. So now we have this, and we can try to read this HyperScript snippet. It's really annoying that it's it comes as a plain string. So we need to write a bit of code inside the string. But yeah, unfortunately that's how it works. Um, so first of all, we do this uh, stopping the event uh, propagation. It's something uh, similar to uh, event prevent default uh, or how it's called in JavaScript world. And after that, we use this uh, sweet uh, alert uh, to fire the alert. And then we can configure it uh, with some properties. Actually, it's pretty powerful uh, in terms of configuration. If we go uh, to their website, that's the configuration bit, and we can con control a lot of uh, uh, parts of that alert. And also, we'll not be using uh, Tailwind to style it, but with this custom class, we basically can provide any uh, Tailwind class for all of the parts of the alert. So we can use uh, Tailwind to match our style for our application, which is pretty cool. All right, so for now we'll just have uh, confirm and uh, some text there. And if result is confirmed, we issuing the request. And this is HTMX confirm is an event that will be fired by HX confirm uh, click. So yeah, that's cool. Um, what we want to change is we want this HX delete here as well. Delete. Yeah, let's maybe add um, a new div 
and we'll keep both buttons in the screen. So let's say we want this. We want uh, these two options as well. Right, yep. And we now have this uh, parameter to have our HyperScript code inside. Let's reload and see. Refreshing the page. Um, delete two. And let's style the button same way. Let's click and see. Right, so we now have this uh, sweet alert here. And if we click OK, it's firing the Ajax request. Let's see. Yeah. Delete two. If if I click somewhere outside, it basically means cancel. And if I confirm, we have this delete request to to the backend. Cool. I think that's it for today. Um, I'm still, as you see, experimenting with HTMX, uh, but I really love it uh, so far. And as I said, I have a hobby project uh, with uh, a bit nasty combination of uh, React, Elm and other things I tried. And I already improved a couple places there. I implemented the infinite load that we built in one of the previous uh, um, series and it improved the UI so much. And I'm looking into adding all these small examples that we're trying there and I'll create a large video about final result and maybe film some process of the changes and, or maybe we'll review the uh, commit history of the changes there and see the, how, how it looks at the end. But yeah, anyway, uh, thanks a lot for watching the channel. Thanks a lot for your likes and comments and don't forget to subscribe. Uh, we still continue the series about building um, the production closure application from scratch. Uh, I also have plans about uh, creating the crash course, beginner's crash course for the closure language uh, and all that stuff. And obviously we'll continue with HTMX as well. Yeah, thanks for your time. Um, have a nice day and see you next video. Bye bye.